Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Fallout New Vegas. Last time, we got everything we needed for the, uh, to get into the Forbidden Zone. We got all the personality cores, we got all but possibly two, maybe one more for, uh, the jukebox upgrades. We can't get it because it was in the Forbidden Zone. And you might be wondering, well, TBG, why are you not in the Forbidden Zone? Why are you over by that mysterious cave? Well, it's because there's something special inside the cave. Something special? And something dangerous. The last legendary creature in New Vegas is actually located inside this cave. It's the most unlikely of suspects, and it will wreck my shit. So I want to be very careful when I go inside. It's also pretty dark in here, which is why I'm wearing the, the gas mask, helmet, my night vision thing, blah blah. Oh, hello. Probably was overkill. You know what? Eh. I don't wanna I don't want to alarm what's inside this cave. Which is a blowfly, but you know, if I fired a gun in here, it might alert what it is. What unspeakable horrors could be lurking inside this cave? What monstrosity could totally make me terrified to actually try and go up against it? Well, first things first, I wanna sw swap this thing. There it is, the main room. Actually, you know what? I think the other way was the upper area. I'm gonna go that way. I don't want to run the risk of being in that thing's crosshairs if it sees me. At least being up on the alcove will give me a bit more in terms of defense. And that's the exit, not the way I wanted to go. I've been building up a lot as to what's inside this cave. I, I got some ammo, I got as much good ammo as I could get, because my funds are starting to run pretty low right now. Yeah, of course it's like 8,000 caps, but 8,000 caps at this late in the game is kind of low. flies in here. Come on, come here, come here. There we go, that's one. Thankfully, I'm practically invisible to these things with this stealth suit. So I can just swat these little guys down with no problem whatsoever. Hopefully, the big bad mama that's inside this place, I can get at least a sneak attack on it. Ooh, there it is! As you see that glowing thing flying in the background, meet the most dangerous enemy in Fallout New Vegas. It is the legendary Blowfly. That's right, the most powerful enemy in the entire game is the legendary version of the weakest enemy in the entire series. Uh, the reason why it's so powerful, it shoots basically high-energy plasma bolts at you instead of, like, the dumb stinger thing of a boss that normal blowfly shoots you. Uh, I'm gonna cripple its wings just to be safe. It has 2,000 HP and 20 damage threshold, and I just realized... Wait a second. Okay, good. I, I still have one free bullet. This is probably gonna go badly. But let's try this. Time to fight. Maybe I should have brought a mini nuke with me. Actually, I think the fact that I'm using a silence weapon, it won't aggro because it doesn't know where I am. Fine, if I can cheese this thing, I'm all for it. Let's see if I can actually get a better look at it without the night vision to screw everything up. Oh, you can't breathe in that thing. This is the very green blowfly. Right in the head. All the points not really gonna do me much good since this has a pretty high damage threshold and all the points only good for like non-armored enemies. Am I even doing any damage to it now? It's got 600, let's see. Yeah, I am doing damage, just very slight damage. 
I'm half tempted to aggro it when it's close to dead, just so you can see what kind of thing it shoots at you. Let's see, we'll do one more shot. One more. All right, good. All right, just to get you, give you an idea of what it shoots at you. Yep, see, high energy plasma bolts. Basically, it shoots a plasma caster at you. Uh-oh. Come on, 8 HP. Oh, God. That light shined in the darkness, and now we took away that one's light. Seen anybody in a while. Maybe the monsters have stopped. Also, you do not want to be near that thing when you kill it, because it, it basically it's explodes it. into a pile of green goo. Kind of like that little perk I get. You know what? Let's share in the love. Everyone blows up today. Nobody ever notices me, but they notice the pit burn light. Eh, well, they'll all be dead, so it's not really anything to be concerned about. Ooh, what's this? Scientist scrubs? I'll take that. I'll take the glove, though. So I'm guessing this was probably the scientist who was experimenting on blowflies. And this was his little research station. For a second, I thought that was a dead body down there because it was just like a pile of things until the light shined on it. All right, now where's that thing's body at? I know it, oh, wait, was that it? No, that's cute fungus. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Well, that was easier than when I had to fight the death claw, that's for sure. Ah, there you are. So you got 52 things of blowfly meat, uh, 13 things of buff out, uh, some drain mark confusion cells because it did shoot like plasma at you. A lot of psycho, a lot of empty syringes. Basically, it's subtle storytelling of what was put into this thing to make it make it that way. I'm guessing that was probably left to the science team that was experimenting on it. But we're done. All legendary creatures have been taken care of. We've got our trophy from this one. It's time to head into the Forbidden Zone and confront Mobius. As soon as I get in, I probably should put my cow back on as well. Yup. Let's head back out into the Forbidden Zone. The zone that once again must be re-emphasized is forbidden. Listen, as soon as this DLC is over, the Hammy Athene's gonna be- The Cazador Preserve and the Night Stalker Splicing Facilities are strangely quiet. Sneaking Too quiet. Like I said, once the DLC is done, basically the hamminess is gonna be taken away, so... I, I wanna live the ham while we still have it. These are pretty powerful. Find somebody. Come on. Half a stim pack. All right, you know what? Going with the power armor. Besides, it's daytime. Kind of bad to use night vision. Oh no, wait, it's just very red from the crystals. suit back on and the cow will you love me if I help you yeah, hide? maybe if you do a good job like you did in the cave then yes We're I will okay love you. oh 
Um, it's a lot! This could be a problem. Because this is actually the second most powerful enemy in New Vegas. It has 3,000 HP and 25... Actually, this thing's even more powerful than the Bloatfly. I don't think it has a high... as powerful attack as the Bloatfly, though. That's why it's considered more powerful. But it's one of the top tier enemies that you want to fight in this game. However, there are some easy workarounds to defeat this thing. First things first, though, I'm gonna use one of my 10 stealth boys, just to make sneaking around much easier. Go over to the drone control terminal. Test log. The Saturnite armor plating on the giant Robo Scorpion has exceeded expectations, mostly while it is virtually impervious to small arms fire, the sonic emitter that Arsons brought in, in managed to fry several of the prototype subsystems. We'll have to look into improved EMP shielding from the next prototype. On a more positive note, the prototype's new atomic laser is performing admirably. Some of the res residual radiation is left behind after the weapon discharge. It may be necessary to requisition more radiation suits and meds as a precaution. Effectiveness log. The constant improvements to the giant Robo Scorpion have rendered the Protectron models we've been using as hostile communist forces largely ineffective. At this stage, they're little more than uh, distractions. Activate the target drones. Oh, we got some little friends to help us. I think Incendiary is better for... Go, my little buddies! Charge! In the name of freedom! This is a pre attack. You can't avoid the Backup generator. This new atomic laser is putting an incredible strain on the giant Robo Scorpion generator. Damn thing shut down right in the middle of the weapons testing last week. I pushed for reducing the laser's output by 25%. Instead, they slapped a backup generator into the Scorpion. Onto the Scorpion. Dangerous, if you ask me. The systems weren't designed to handle the power from two systems at once. If, and if some rookie tech fries up the backup generator too early, well... Activate the backup generator! So, I really do like this boss fight because you don't want to engage the boss whatsoever, because... It's a beast! If you try to go hand-to-hand -hand or toe-to-toe -to -toe with this thing, it will wreck you! Which is why you want to try and circumvent it and weaken it by going around the battlefield to, you know, find methods to weaken the, the boss. And I really like that in this game. It, it takes away the whole, you know, here's boss, fight boss, pow, 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 bang, 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 slap, 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 all right, boss is dead. Instead, you know, you, you gotta use your mind to defeat it. Which is kind of funny since I don't have a mind to really use, but you get the idea. I also bought that speed upgrade for sneaky because that, I thought it would be useless. And it's actually pretty helpful. Oh, uh, all my Protectron buddies are dead. Don't worry, guys. Your sacrifices will not have been in vain. Also, before I leave, I need to remember to grab the emitter upgrade from here. Who do you think is cuter, Dr. Klein or Dr. Boros? No comment. Alright, well, it hasn't seen me. Let's sneak on over to these little observation platforms because there might be another way to weaken it. So hopefully my stealth boy does not run out. Thankfully, the stealth suits upgrades that we got are proven to be rather helpful. Take all this ammo. And all this ammo. Ooh, hey, a laser.
laser turret system. It would be a shame if I were to activate it and turn it against the giant robo-scorpion. Would be a shame indeed. Which is what I'm gonna do! As soon as I hacked it. Uh, backstabs! Close. Uh, canisters? I figured bad stats would be the most sense because we're using it against the, the boss here, but eh. Canisters, new target, X-42 giant robo-scorpion. Go, my little minions! Zap it to it explodes! Side. Get inside here. Let's see what we got. Emergency shutdown terminal. Oh, that's close. Uh, let's see. Civilization. Appreciation. Nope. Alright, well, if that's the case, start removing dust and hopefully I can get some backup ones. Duds that can be getting gotten rid of. Hmm, figured that bracket over there would have been one. Uh, purification makes the most sense if this is like a shutdown thing. Emergency sh shutdown procedure log. Per instructions from the higher ups, after that one time the giant Robo Scorpion's attack routine malfunctioned. We've installed an emergency shutdown procedure. Let's hope that we never have to use it. The prototype systems will all be fried and we won't be able, won't be up and running again for weeks. The military is expecting delivery of the battle-ready model within six months, and the project has already had enough delays. Initiate emergency su shutdown. And that's one way to beat the boss. Aw oh man, no kaboom. But I was expecting a nurse shattering kaboom. Is there anything else over here? One more area that we didn't check. Ooh, and there's the audio sample. Robo Scorpion. All right, so we need to go back to the biological research station. And I think that I think that might be what the last one is. Odd that they put not the last one in the Forbidden Zone, arguably the last place that you would probably go to do all this stuff. That's the lair. So yeah, if you max out your science, then guess what? You can just immediately beat the boss if you're just good at hacking. Will it hack? And you know what? We preserved the model. You know, if it wasn't for the fact that it tried to kill me, it's actually kind of adorable. Beats the hell out of a giant, just rad scorpion. At least this one is very colorful. All right, Mobius, the time has come. Probably take off the stupid hood, though. Mobius, I've come for blood. Oh, he's not trying to kill me the second he sees me. And huh, this place kind of looks a lot like the think tank if you squint your eye a little bit. Huh? Yo, hello there. Uh, ah, too close. Are there, aren't you? Forgive my confusion. So hard to tell these days. 
You seem familiar somehow. I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain, perhaps? It's just up there. Uh, such a nice brain, young, very bright. A uh, little hard to see you. Uh, can you walk into my left, uh, right FOV cone? Ah, that's it. You're coming into focus nicely. Uh, is that better? Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> that's old age for you. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. The <laughs> flying tortoises, oh, what a worst. Would you care for a mentor? Uh, thanks. Mm, I love mentats. Delicious and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly science-horrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky talents are zipping through my biogel. I forget them all not long after, though, especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations, although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. You aren't exactly what I was expecting. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Uh, why did you steal my brain? Oh, a variety of raisins. You're something of a homily. The uh, anomaly? Uh, you're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well, your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. Why is that a problem? I'm not sure, except that I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I have very good reasons for almost everything I do. Even if I forget them occasionally. Although I feel this one is especially important. Oh, oh well. But I want to leave. Well, first things first, I'm curi curious about some things. Oh, curiosity. I experience that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm hmm. I can't fix your monitor, but if you're getting ghost reception, I can fix that. The ghosts aren't real? That changes everything! Why, I can save my computing power for other perceptual impossibilities. Please be my guest. Uh, the receptor is there, and the side-switching wobbly bob, uh, just turn that. Good, good, better. Oh. Oh, yes, that feels wonderful. This is even better than my afternoon Mentats break. Can you tell me about the Robo-Scorpions? Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the desert, <laughs> like poisonous frosting. How scary, I thought. But they have survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts and acted as walking eyes and data-drained computers and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about custard. I do so love custard. Or oh, was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. 
All right. I find things curious as well. Go on. You don't seem aggressive. Why broadcast threats to the think tank? Oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that. Had to work myself up to it. Not usually violent. Except when I am. Then, <laughs> watch out! So many chems, such varieties. Whenever I take Mentats, I can feel my entire chassis breathe like a big spherical lung. <laughs> As for the psycho, sometimes get the chem dispositories in my tank all switched up. Go in the wrong tube. Still, served its purpose. Wait, sounds like you built the Robo Scorpions issues threat to the think to keep the think tank occupied? Did I? <laughs> Maybe I did. Can't have them leaving. There's some reason for it. Ethics or uh mm. Calm science? You and your brain are quite alike. I'm sure it knows the raisins better than I do. Everything you've told me doesn't add up. Your plan, even your name, Mobius. Dr. Mobius. Rather catchy, isn't it? It's my name, and my new name overwrote the old one. This name's as real as you or I. Although I believe your brain expressed similar incredulity at the nature of such an appellation. Someone's been watching too many old world science fiction movies, it said. I believe it meant me. I must admit I have a vulnerability for holotape fantasies of planets and robots and all that is forbidden. As for the name I was born with... Like the think tank, we were all reprogrammed to forget them, take on new names. It enforces the recursion loop in our perception programming. You, reprog re blah, blah, blah. You, you reprogram their names as part of the recursion loop? Wait, to trap their processors? Now, trap is a rather harsh word, like excrement. Not an inappropriate word, but still, Rather harsh. But, yes, I did uh, take some liberties with their programming. It's all right, they don't remember. I certainly didn't until you said trap, and then I said excrement, and then... Why did you trap them? The radar fence to keep the think tank hemmed in wasn't really enough. They keep testing things. They would have found a way to disarm it. I suspect I have Plan 9s in place, but I may have coded myself to forget them, just in case. They're probably very dangerous, lethal, or worse. So I had to do something else to keep them occupied here. Or as you like to say, trapped. I prefer to have several Plan 9s in case the 7s fail. Well, I hear Plan 9 is out of this world, so I can see why it worked. Klein, Mobius, Zeros, a circle, eights, an infinity symbol, they're all loops. I get it. Oh, you figured it out. No pun intended. Dr. O, which is actually not his real name multiplied, since you can't multiply his real name in the first place. Oroboros, Klein, they have all forgotten themselves. And not only themselves, but the world. Sense of time and history. All that is left is what's here. I reprogrammed their chronometers, geometers, and cartography programs. This is now their world, here, Big Mountain. It was a merciful lobotomy, really, thinking back. They were my friends, but sometimes they would take things too far. And the world isn't ready for that kind of too far thing taking. That's my professional opinion, anyway. 
And I am told I was once <laughs> quiet professional. Minor detail, but a snake devouring its own tail is Ouroboros, not Ouroboros. Really? It is so unlikely to make an error in anything I do. If you lobotomize the think tank, why terrorize them? Well, it's simple. Despite their many failings, they are rather bright. They are the think tank for a reason. That I didn't change. Without something to distract them, make them afraid, they would simply deduce what had happened. And when they start deucing it up, then you came along, the final variable solved. They saw that their world was larger than they perceived. Bacteria, finally able to see its host. But there must have been other signs of a larger world. There have been other visitors to make them doubt their perceptions, but you are the one who dialed back their monitor micromagnifiers. You were irrefutable proof that there was a world outside. And then there was the whole brain fiasco, which forced me to take steps. See, your brain had a special kind of uh, a wrinkle, a uniquity that they had never thought to try in all their countless escape attempts. A cranial injury from the attack outside Good Springs. Yes, very good. I should have Mentats ingest you instead of the other way around. Hmm, Mentats. In any event, you showed up at the think tank, and because you had suffered a cranial injury in just the right place, bullets in the head are usually much more fatal, and yours was a light case of bullet headitis. But it was enough for the autodoc in the sink to change its programming to fix the problem, and the brain extraction technology for once worked. That gave the think tank the knowledge its brains shouldn't, uh, couldn't, uh, uh, couldn't possess. With that knowledge, the procedure can be reversed. If they obtain that procedural data, they can use it to mush and modify their cranial cells into hosts to slip past the radar fence. I'm sure of it. And once they're off the reservation... So, if I don't get my brain back in my head, I can't leave ever? Oh no. I doubt your brain would be so unreasonable. It already knows the trick of it, you see. Doesn't need to be in a host body at all. If you become friends or exist in an uneasy truce with weapons aimed at each other, it would unlock the fence for you. Well, once the think tank was dealt with, of course, your brain is a responsible sort. Doesn't want mad scientists running around everywhere. Klein said they had an idea to get three technologies after your broadcast. Coincidence? I consider coincidence to be profanity, along with the words astrology, herbal tea, and luck. So watch it, potty mouth! My threat broadcast is designed to instill and install fear. And along with the emotional download, other data rides the fear carrier wave. It prompted them to focus on retrieving those technologies and bring them to attack me. And coincidentally, Pardon my language. All those technologies are needed to put a brain, uh, your brain, back into its skull properly. What's the purpose of these technologies then? The X2 antenna can be used to focus your alpha wave frequency thought patterns. The sneaky suit? Why, it houses a cardiac regulator. And the sonic sound wave projecto emitter was never intended as a weapon. It was a medicinal vertebrae pulse desensitizer. In short, brains, a heart, and courage. Spine. 
I think there was a story once where a band of murderous thugs sought these things. They had them all the time in the story. Didn't stop them from murdering to get them. And it won't stop the think tank. Ah, either. the Warlock of Iz. I've read it. Was there any other data transmitted in your threat broadcast? Yes, my overly aggressive Camda broadcast was designed to keep reinforcing the forget, fear, rinse, and repeat program. Oh, and the get me the things to castrate your only possible escape attempt. But I couldn't delete you or your arrival any more than I could the other visitors. Only so much science can do when you started talking to them. You're really quite difficult to ignore, you know. It's because you're, well, ah, rather intriguing, if you'll forgive an old brain for saying so. But the think tank downloaded the schematics, not the items. They can re rebuild them. Oh, that means my plan is a total failure. That is unfortunate. Oh well, at least I tried. I was curious about some other things, though. Yes? Uh... I don't want to say this! Uh, let's see... Yes, very good. So you threats to keep them occupied, any other visitors? You know anything about the other visitors? Uh, not much, except they contaminated Big Mountain and installed new ideas in the think tank. One caused a great deal of infrastructure damage with his brain and smartiness. Ruthless, that one, played a little rough with the trains. But the last one was the most dangerous. Him uh, slipping away. That was almost as bad as the think tank escaping. What do you mean? The first one, the ruthless one who smashed up our toy trains, asked for weapons, power, items he could use to destroy a nation with force. The other, the other asked a different question. And with it, got the true answer about what makes nations and what breaks them. He spoke to the think tank to climb, showed them the flag of the old world, and it made them remember all of it, all that had happened. They shared things with him that they shouldn't. He now carries those ideas, that knowledge, elsewhere. So, you set, set your threats on a loop to keep them occupied? Yes. I certainly wouldn't loop it on purpose. 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 I am far too sophisticated to make such a childish error, error, error. All right. Well, sorry, gotta kill ya. Oh, intriguing. I've never been killed before. Although, after that time I got that phlegmy discharge in my biogel, <laughs> I wished I had been. Well, if there's going to be killing, I defer to your expertise in this matter. How should we begin? Engineering viruses? Cancerotic beams? Atomics? Electrocutioning? Or should I summon my minions? Yes, my minions. Uh, what minions? Whoa, have they not constructed themselves yet? That's a bit premature of me. The Robo Scorpions, of course. They can assemble themselves from floor panels and parts scattered about. Quite inventive. Never really know when they might suddenly appear. Minions, destroy this intruder! Hmm. Or perhaps make it more dramatic. Minions, to me! <laughs> oh yes, that's quite a bit better. Um. Sneaking done. Oh, Hiding God! Up. No, I don't want to set a... 
satisfy Mobius look like to be killed. I guess I don't have a choice right now. Please take this. I don't want you to die. Okay, fine. That's the way you want it. At least I actually have like a, a like an explanation about random encounters and how they just appear out of everywhere. All right, I'm sorry, Mobius. Does that feel better? Mobius, can we stop? I'm sure you don't like this. Sure you want to do this, Mobius? So you think you're a match? Just that. Okay. Was that all? You know what? No, no, not this way. Mobius seemed like a nice guy. He was just trying to do the right thing, although a little bit crazy. I'll screw this. I'm using my time powers. We're going back, and we're going to make sure Mobius stays alive. All right, um, I want my brain so I can leave. Now, that seems to be rather hormonal of you. Flight or fight response, you know. Hard to cut that out completely. Your brain is here, safe with me. We chat over mentats. All right, well, I need him back. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. All right, Mobius. You seem like an awesome guy. I, do I don't want to kill you. He, he was trying to do the right thing. My god, there's so much science all over the place. Take my stupid recon helmet off. Hello, me. Well, well, look who finally dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been? Crawling through pits of radioactive muck again? Why does my brain sound like Stewie Griffin? Are you my brain? Ah, lovely. Figured that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Man, why are you such a dick? Well, that's a fine how do you do. Me. A, uh, quote, dick, unquote. As if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus-infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoyed that little moment? Well, I mean, that, that was my spleen saying to do that. It was not my fault. Of course you're responsible. You're my brain. I most certainly am not. I'm the seat of all reason and logic in our little partnership. All those feelings that motivate you, that sense of righteousness and that rush you get when you help someone, do you know where those come from? Glands. They come from glands. Free of the tyranny of your ape-like and primitive endocrine system, I can see how foolish your motives are. But you're the source of most of those glands, unless you're arguing that my thyroid is the blame. I... well... look, it's all a very complex system of biofeedback and other things I wouldn't expect you to understand. Admit it, you're just as glandular as I am. Oh, all right. Perhaps I am, but at least I'm logical about it. Hey, I is logical too, duh. Uh, don't you want to be re reunited? I thought you'd be happy to get back in my head. I 
I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can Hey, see. we haven't had the go since I died. Oh. But what about the good things? What about the cool what about a cool breeze on your cheek? The smell of food? Love. Overrated biological feedback. Believe me, you only feel that way because you've got all that meat oozing hormones. Isn't it just as true as you only feel this way because you're lacking those hormones? Hmm. I suppose you're right. That does call certain assumptions into question, doesn't it? So, we're at an impasse. You can't feel what I feel, and I can't think what you think. Indeed, quite the conundrum. How do you suppose we've resolved it? I think we have to trust each other and acknowledge that we aren't com complete if we're separated. I suppose there might be some advantage to that, yes. There's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. So what do you say, Brain? Draw me in some more wild adventures? Wait, first things first, how the hell did Mobius get a hold of you? After the think tank extracted me from your skull, they fell to bickering amongst themselves. I'm sad to say we were quite forgotten about. Dr. Mobius saw an opportunity to gain some leverage and had me spirited away to his dome. How did he manage to do that? I don't know. I'm afraid the trauma of our separation rendered me quite insensate. I didn't come around until I was safely ensconced in this tank. I'm quite sure whatever he did was highly scientific. Hmm, indeed. Quite scientific. Well, that seems pretty luck. unlikely a coincidence. Hardly. Dr. Mobius keeps a close optical sensor on the goings-on at the think tank. As soon as he saw the opportunity, he took it. Well, that answers that. On to something else. Well, as long as your curiosity is satisfied. It... Uh, so what do you say, Brain? Join me on some more wild adventures? Come on, just like the old days. Well, I suppose you've convinced me well enough. I'll rejoin your body if that's your final decision. Unfortunately, before we get to that stage of the proceedings, we have a problem. Even if I could settle myself back in your skull and reconnect all those pesky nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here. We would have to make use of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined. Inclined. Yet. Get it? Even my brain can make puns. It truly is me. Why? They promised to put us back together once I did what they wanted. And you believe them? Really? I know you were recently deprived of my fabulous advice, but... Really? Once I'm delivered into their clutches, they'll find a way past the radar fence and the whole Mojave will be their playground. And that is assuming, of course, that one of them doesn't take a fancy to our body and decide to slip his own brain into it instead. You're part of me. I know you don't want to let that happen more, any more than I do. Well, I suppose I do miss those endorphin rushes when we save the day. All right, what's the plan? You think Tink won't hold up their bargain? We'll make them. Look out, Think Tank! This brain is coming out of its jar! I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sync's Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go! Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. Alright, just gonna stick you in this jar right here. So yes, now we can finally put our brain back in our head, our spine back into our back, and our heart back into our chest. Mobius? Oh, I see you and your brain reached a compromise. How pleasant. 
I hypothesized after the indignant frequencies my receptors had uh, recepted, such a partnership-based conclusion would be low on the likely scale. Oh, you just don't know me and my brain. My brain told me the think tank needs to be stopped. Can you help? If I recall, I had a plan that was working, or whatever it was. I don't think it reached fruition. I would recall fruit if it had happened. I wasn't trying to kill them, just keep them out of trouble. What was that plan? Last, I probably uh, wrote it down on the floor somewhere. Uh, what was the plan you had? Something ingenious and needlessly complicated, I expect. I may have already told you and forgotten it. I forgot I had forgotten pencils until one day I found one. Spent days studying its purpose before my memory circuit kicked in. Felt quite silly. Any tactics I could use on them? That will be difficult. It would be like fighting five scaled-down versions of me that have better depth perception. And they have an arsenal of vivisectors, brainial beams, and a rather nasty... ...ray that can make your atoms do a happy dance. What exactly would make an atom do if a happy dance? If you survive those highly improbable odds and ends, then deceasing them is definitely an option. Although, I doubt killing them would do anything except make you feel better. Or let you brag to other humans about your primal violentness. Anything I could do to stop them doesn't require violence? Well, you could try and appeal to their humanity. <laughs> That's a tired cliché. And really, when they were humans, they weren't very good humans. Well, I want to make an effort at least. Well, there's many things they have forgotten, sitting in their bowls. Friendship, the thrill of discovery, love, masturbation, yeah, the, the usual. usual. Much like your brain, I am certain there is something you can spark within each of them. Memories, hormones. A wise man once said, the eyes do more than see. Make them see, if you can. Or, if not, you can always make them succumb to fear. <laughs> it certainly worked for me, for a time. Then you came along, and bravery and or desperation trumped that little idea. Back to the drawing board, I suppose. Or is this the end? Hard to tell. Scare them? Ow. Oh, tell them I'm still alive. We had a nice chat, and we agree on a few things. That's true. Oh, well, he's not wrong. It? Or you could kill me and lie about it. Either way, it would be interesting. And if you are partial to lying and deception, well, you could tell them a ludicrous lie. The more over the top, the better. That's my experience. They're more than a little gullible. I better make it convincing, though. Or it'll be the dissection table and vivisectors oh, for you. And if you speak of me, please try and make me look good. I am Dr. Mobius, after all. Not some lab assistant teacher's aide. All right, uh, can I have a mint for the road? Why, of course you can. I am well versed in the science of sharing. Well, when not cammed out of my sphere. Thank you. You're an all right guy, Mobius. Indeed. The uh, goodbye part of our little chat, then. Uh, goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on oh, the floor. Oh, you mean the equations I'm standing on? Whoops. All right, so we got our brain back. We found out Mobius is not that bad of a guy. Uh, but we gotta stop the think tank or else they're just gonna turn the entire wasteland into their nice little science experiment. As much as I don't like confining something to a small little area, <laughs> my friends probably have something to say about that. We gotta keep them in Big Mountain.
It's for the greater good of the wasteland, if you ask me. Maybe if we appeal to their humanity, we did do some work for them and showed that, well, Mobius did say they weren't the best of people. There were some things that they wished that they would have been better about. Ah, uh, I can see Mobius' new pet now. Scorpion and me. Actually, no, that sounds like a Mortal Kombat buddy comedy spinoff. My pet Scorpion? Ugh, that sounds terrifying. I'll, I'll come up with something later. But we need to do one more thing before we head back to the think tank. We need to get the last of the Sonic Emitter upgrades. Which means we need to go back to... Do we need to go back to the Botanical Gardens? I'm sick of going there. It's all so green and planty. And green. I don't like green. Okay, I kind of do, but... The planty and stuff. Nature. I don't like that. Let's see. Yep, we need to go to bio... No, the biological research station. Which is over here. Which... I guess Signal Hills would be the best one. Doesn't look like it's inside the canyon, so best to just go to Signal Hills. Eh, you know what? I'll put my hazmat suit on. Don't you like me anymore? I do, but I, I just want to change things up a bit. Oh god! Okay, chalk that another one for TBG is wrong, because apparently... Wait. Take that chalk away! Because I think it is up here. Hello? Come on, get up. Get up. Up we go. Let's see. All right, Fido. Should be around here somewhere. Oh, it's this little area. How did I miss this? Oh, seats. Dionysa Multiplicilla. Oh, that was the last of it. Nice. And that actually was the last emitter upgrade. That was just for the the biological stuff. The the seed thing that wants me to put my seed inside it. Oh yeah. Alright, let's go back to the think tank. Or the sink. Whatever. Alright, uh, let's see. Eh, kind of raggy. Do I my... Where's my scrubs at? Ah, oh, poor thing. Maybe if I look the part of the scientist, they'll actually think I'm an actual scientist. Biological research station. You got some plans for me, don't you? Yeah. Oh. Or do I plug it into the central? Hold on a second. Did you know the communists have an organ? What's the haps? I found a new wave file. And recalibrate it. Robo Scorpion. What do you do? Uh, explosions. All right. Of course, it probably needs to destroy before it explodes. Oh, some snack cakes. Got any more sweet, innocent? Uh, nothing new for the toaster. And over here. You got some plans for me, don't you? Ah, yeah, baby. Alright, process seed in the planter.
And with that, the field research is finally done. And I'm level 50. Awesome. All right, I up explosives to 80, uh, put sneak to 71, and survival to 76. And now for the last perk of Fallout New Vegas. Well, level up perk. There's actually, there's actually a level 50 perk. Um, I thought you died. Your story's past have, your storied past has fallen from memory, cause, cause everyone thought you died. Your karma is reset. You inflict 10% more damage for every 100 points of karma. You gain 10 health. You're also immune to all critical hits, but I need to have good karma. So basically, karma is set right back to zero. It's not neither good nor bad. You're just right down the middle, so you gotta regain all of it. However, every time you get 100 points of karma, you basically your HP goes up by 10, and I never get, get critically hit ever again. But there are also a couple of other perks for level 50. Um, there's the... I. Ain't like that now. Maybe you were bad once, but you aren't like that now. Your karma has been reset to zero, and you regenerate AP 25% faster. Your attack speed is also increased by 20%. You're also immune to critical hits, but that... Actually, no, I was wrong. Uh, it's based on what karma you do have. So if I played a completely evil character and had bad karma, then I'd get this perk, and basically it would be AP over HP. And just lucky I'm alive. You've had lots of close calls. Whenever you finish a fight with less than 25% health, your luck increased by four, by four, plus four for three minutes. You're also immune to critical hits, and your own critical hits inflict 50% more damage, but you need to be right down the middle with neutral karma. I'm making the hand gesture even though you can't see it. So basically, do you want HP if you're good, uh, AP if you're bad, or do you want to be more critical if you're just average? It's kind of sad that this is the last of the New Vegas perks that we're going to get. So, you know what? Let's go over the perks that we couldn't get. Uh, we got Light Touch. Heavy armor just isn't your thing, so you learn to customize light armor for maximum benefit. While we're in light armor, you gain 5% critical hit chance, and your enemies suffer a 25% critical hit chance. Friend of the Night. You're a true friend of the night. Your eyes adapt quickly to low-light conditions indoors and when darkness falls across the wasteland. Basically, you get night vision... Anytime when it's nighttime or when you're in like dark areas so like caves or decrepit buildings and stuff. Alertness! You've learned to keep your senses alert to any danger. When crouched and not moving, you gain two, plus two to your perception attribute to help you find enemies before they find you. Ghastly Scavenger. With the Ghastly Scavenger, you are in sneak mode. You gain the option to eat a super mutant or feral ghoul corpse to regain health. Every time you feed, you lose karma. And if the act is witnessed, it's considered a crime against nature. This is actually one of the few perks that you actually need a different perk to get, which you need a cannibal perk. So if you like eating regular people, but want a fancier or more unique taste, this is the perk for you. Hobbler. With a hobbler perk, your chance to hit an opponent's leg in vats is significantly increased. I think it just increases the base like chance to hit their leg and not like with each uh, sub subsequent uh, tag of the certain limb, it increases. Silent running. With the silent running perk, running no longer factors into a successful sneak attempt. So basically, you can just go as fast as you want, and you'll still be considered hidden. Sniper. With a sniper perk, I'm actually sad I did not get this perk. I'm not lying. With a sniper perk, your chance to hit the opponent's head in vats is significantly increased. So basically, it's hobbler for legs, whereas this is for heads. Unstoppable force. Your ma your material might is truly legendary. You do a large amount of additional damage through through enemy blocks with all melee weapons and unarmed attacks. I honestly, unless you were playing a straight melee build, this is kind of pointless. I never actually see people block attacks in this game. Light step with light step perk, you never set off enemy mines or floor based traps. Mines? Eh, it's take or leave with this one. Action boy. With the action boy perk, you gain an additional 20, 15 action points to use in vats. Pretty self explanatory. Better criticals. With better criticals, you gain a 50% damage bonus every time a critical hit is scored on an opponent. 
Infiltrator. With the Infiltrator, if a lock is broken and can't normally be picked again, you can attempt to pick it once again one more time. This includes the locks previously broken by a force locked attempt. Basically, if you decide to try and force a lock, it breaks and basically unusable, this gives you a second chance to do it. Ninja! The Ninja perk grants you the power of the Fabled Sh Shadow Warriors. When attacking from with either melee or unarmed, you gain a 15% critical chance on every strike. Sneak attack criticals do 25% more damage than normal. Solar Powered. With Solar Powered, you gain the additional 2 points to strength when in direct sunlight and slowly regenerate lost health. So basically, you become a plant. Irradiated Beauty. Any time you sleep, you remove all of your rads in addition to regaining all of your health. In Hardcore Mode, you still don't regain health, but you lose 100 rads. So this is kind of a good one for Hardcore Runners. Slayer. The Slayer walks the earth. The speed of all melee attacks and unarmed attacks is increased by 30. Uh, with Nerves of Steel, you regenerate action points more than you quickly would. And normal. Uh, more quickly than you would normally. Uh, Tunnel Runner, the Warrens of the Divide have taught you to keep your head down. The movement speed is greatly increased while sneaking in light armor. Eh. With the Rad Ad Adaption perk, your radiation level slowly decreases on its own over time. Good for hardcore runners if you're in highly radiated areas and just need to get rid of it. Uh, roughing it, you're more at home under the stars than under the roof. Anytime you sleep outside, you gain the benefits of being well rested even if you don't own a bed. Implant GRX. You gain non-adaptive subroutine turbo chem injector. This perk may be taken twice with the second rank increasing the effect from 2 to 3 seconds and the use per day from 5 to 10. Activated in the Pip-Boy inventory. I've never actually used this, so... I might experiment in a future playthrough, maybe. And that's it. So now the big question is, what will my final perk be? Alright, so the final perk I'm going for in Fallout New Vegas, I'm going with the Walker Instinct. Your senses have become so keen that you can feel the slightest vibration in the ground. You gain one perception and agility attributes while outside. And well, I'm going to be outside a lot, so it makes the most sense to take this. Not. I guess I was debating either to go over this or where was it? Um, toughness. But I think Walker might be a better choice for me, just so that I can bit more perspective and have more AP when I'm outside. So we're gonna go with that for the final perk. And that's it. I'm finally max level, so all quests mean nothing to me now except for story and stuff. Let's go into the think tank and confront the big M. Uh, let's go into the think tank and confront the big tank. The think tank. God, I cannot talk. That decline awaits. Make sure all you prepared finish once and for all. Oh, wait. I forgot to get my brain. One of the main reasons why I came in here. I need my brain back. You require some additional. Um, yeah, first things first, I'd like a basic physical exam, just so I'm max health. Uh, forceps, nurse. This man's got a severe case. The shoe along. Uh. Okay. Do you require yes, some I do additional... require some additional services. God, he sounds like Sam Elliott was shoved into this thing. Nah, there's not enough mumbles. I would like to swap body parts. Well, with my brain back in my head, let's reattach my spine. We have lost the spineless perk, but we have gained the reinforced spine perk. Your spine is back in your body, but some advanced technologies remain. Your torso can now be crippled again, but your strength and damage threshold have been doubled. So, basically now my... Uh, of course, I gotta go through the reshoving the spine back into my body. So now, my strength is up to 9, whereas it was at 7. And my damage threshold is status general. Um, hmm. It doesn't say where my main damage threshold is. Ah, well, I, I'm more stronger now. Now, you might be thinking, well, 
CBG, you got your spine back, but what about your heart? Well, the thing about my heart is... With the perk I have now, the heartless perk... Uh, if I could go to perks over here... It would be... There it is. My heart's been ripped out, replaced with advanced technologies. I can't be poisoned, and the filters in your heart will also regulate bleeding and healing, allow all healing functions to function higher. Well, so now I'm confused and all that stuff. If I were to replace my heart back into my body, um, I would be able to be poisoned again. But I believe it reduces the chance of being addicted to chems and stuff. And I'm not a big chems user, as you've known throughout this series. However, I feel like being heartless is actually a benefit. I know, that's probably the first time that's ever been uttered in the world. But it's true. I'm never being able to be poisoned again by Cazadors, which has probably saved my life more times than I can count. And also by Night Stalkers. I gotta say, I'm probably gonna leave my heart. My heart is always gonna be in this place with its hamminess, and now it's literally gonna be there. Did I change the mood lighting in here as well, or is this because everyone's angry at me? Klein, we got some words to share. The lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? I found my brain. But now you and I are going to sell some things. I recommend watching your tone with me, lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again. I'm not handing my brain over. There's still some things we should discuss. And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain, we have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything in it. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first. About this Mojave place. A fertile testing ground for our experiments. Yes, yeah, you see, about that. That's not gonna work. Um... Maybe you should confer with your colleagues first. Nonsense! Confer? Colleagues? Those are two words I do not recognize. Dr. Klein, I must intersect. Please, do not harm the lobotomite. I'm not going to harm it. I'm going to dissect it until it's dead. Why the sudden intersection, Dalla? I cannot stand a breathing, a sweet breathing organism breathing in and out to suddenly not breathe. We must keep it alive. For study. Slow study. Gala, these vocalized pauses are unlike you. What do you care? Fine, uh, you know, this lobotomite, it's a great sounding board. You respect ideology, right? This one's, well, it's got good ideas. Silence, Dr. O. This is a think tank decision. Save your objections until after I have decided our course of action. You know what, Klein? Stick a straw in your tank and suck yourself. Long and deep. And my name is Zero. Yeah, a big fat zero with a slash through it. The slash as a designator of... Why, that is brilliant. But how did you... The lobotomite taught me that. Taught me a name is more than, um... <laughs> that I should take pride in things like names and... You know what? Forget it, Klein. I hate you! And your theory of Bringle Beam Oscillation? The Chinese had it first, you copycat! How dare you! Brainial beam oscillation was solely my discovery. I expressly told you that and deleted all evidence to the contrary. Ed, 
it's too late. Why are you acting like this? You've never refused to commit necessary surgery before. And this lobotomite needs its surgery. speech, but there is no room in my vocabulators for friend and lobotomite in the same sentence. The very concept! <laughs> Revolting. Perhaps you are irradiated with camaraderie radiation. We have chems for that. We can save you from your emotional addiction. If I may, I feel as if I must be the voice of reason here. This lobotomite is much like us. Regarding even animals and pets is nothing more than avenues to promote science. There is good here. Instead of ending its life on the table, we should prolong its suffering in the name of science. Like good old Gabe, the finest of lab specimens. Why am I even listening to you fools? Enough of this mutinous chorus. If there's a word I hate, it's mutiny. And the word jism, which never made any sense to me. It's ridiculous putting j and zm together like that. Nonsense! I count as five, like the mighty human hand I once had, with its five penises clenched in a fist. Sounds to me like your math is wrong, and the arts aren't good. Nonsense! The mathematics of this situation are on our side, Lobotomite. I believe... No, wait. Hmm. Carry the two, and then... Hmm. If this were a democracy, I would be concerned. We are too scientific for that. So just surrender. It's not a democracy. It's a research facility. And over half your colle colleagues dispute your findings. You dare use logic against me? I do. Here's the deal. I'm not going to surrender. You are. That's no deal at all. There's a whole world beyond the crater filled with ideas and possibilities. We could have escaped, seen it all for ourselves, tested it, prodded at it, made it squirm. You can still do that here, quietly, for me. For you? And for science? I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy well, us. Well, just keep me happy and I won't destroy you. Well, we did it. We convinced the think tank to not, you know, venture out into the Mojave. Dr. Klein has been dealt with. My brain is back with me where it belongs. I think all in all, we did As good. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The Courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discovery safe until they were needed to help others. Which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The courier had scoured much of the Big Empty, although secrets still remained in the crater's depths. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him overmuch. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. 
After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The Sync Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. One of them eventually transferred to the Lightwave Dynamics plant and began a long, unrequited affair with one of the holograms. The scene continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the Magneto Hydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. Once it learned of the innovative toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. The toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sync personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster Eat it, in toaster. the tub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy, except he found it peaceful there, tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Owl Jefferson, with sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counter-frequency that saved Big Mountain from sonic invasion in 2910. If you didn't hear about it, Good. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sawing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. 
This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after, the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility. God, what have I done? The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, None the wiser about the world beyond. Although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier. And if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. dibs. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past, they can't see the present, much less the future. For what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. There was Old World Blues, a new world hope. And hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the Big Empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. That was kind of... ambiguous. I've lost the brainless perk, and I've gained big brained. Your brain is back in your body, but some of the advanced technologies remain. Your head still cannot be crippled, but you're only 10% more resistant to addiction now. Surprisingly, your damage threshold has improved by 10%. You've acquired the Big Mountain Transpond... It's capable of transporting you, and you alone, between the Mojave Wasteland and Big Mountain. To return to the Mojave, or go to Big Mountain Mojave, just simply a trip, equip the Transpond... And... As you would any weapon, and pull the trigger, and away you'll go! No, this won't work in interiors or in combat situations. It's totally incapable of hearing your, harming your enemies. I think I made a big mistake in saying I'll stay here and watch over the place. 
Alright, let's just grab my stuff. And let's finally, after oh so long it means stuck in this crater, let's go home. Although this place, it's left me more questions than answers. Who was that one courier that kept coming through here? Who was he? Why does he keep asking about all these things? About old world government and me? I don't know. Something just doesn't seem right. Alright, where's the big mountain? Trans... Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. This is probably the most unique looking thing New Vegas has. And boop! Oh, it's so nice to be back home. It's been too long. Let's back on my outfit. Equip my plasma rifle. Ah, the gunfires of distant battles. This is definitely home. Let's head back to the Lucky 38. It has been way too long since I've seen this place. I've missed it so much! Oh, New Vegas, I have missed you! I am finally back! Your king has returned, and now he will go to his castle to take a well-deserved nap. Oh, it's nice to see men and women in uniform again. Battle's getting pretty close. Uh, but for now, that battle can wait. I'm just gonna go take a nice long nap. I'm gonna hibernate till the next... Uh, I don't know, I'll probably sleep for the next three years. I think that's good for the wear and tear fatigue of these last couple of adventures we've been having. Back! to the presidential suite. Hey everybody, I'm back! Did you miss me? No? Anyone? What about you? Did you miss me? Have you been watching the door well? Boone, how's it going? Is it time? For bed? Yes. Well, let me know when it is. Uh... This has been way too... Actually, you know what? I forgot to do one thing. Actually, oh no! I forgot to do two things! I forgot to grab the snow globe! Oh, Lily, you admiring the, the trophy... Trophy stuff? Well, there's yet another trophy that needs to be added. There it is. One bloatfly meat from our legendary bloatfly kill. Boop. Perfect. I think I'm missing something. Oh yeah, the Night Stalker tail. Where is it? Oh hey, Arcade. What's up? Arcade, you thief! That was my meat! I mean, I know you're gay and all, but you can't just go around grabbing another guy's meat. You need consent first. Ugh, now I think I know what happened to the Night Stalker tail I had up there. Well... Crap, looks like I need to go back to Big Mountain real quick, because I forgot to grab the snow globe. Yeah. I'll see you guys back there. I can't ever seem to escape that place, apparently. All right, we are back in Big Mountain. Uh, the place we need to go to for the bobblehead, bobblehead, this is in Fallout 3 or 4, the snow globe is right here, the X-17 Meteorological Station. It's literally a hop, skip, and jump from the construction site. 
or the botanical gardens, whichever you want to go to. Alright. Oh, great. More robots. Just what I've always wanted. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Taste science. I'm done fighting for the day. Station of hostilities complete. Time to fight. Iron Belly. Does that mean you can eat anything? Also, that sounds like the name of like a, a ship captain, Captain Iron Belly. He can deflect cannonballs with a single gut thrust. Eat anything above or below the hull. He is Captain Iron Belly. That's why I'm gonna name my Sea of Thieves OC. Ah, shit, I'm over encumbered. And buff out. Perfect. Boop, 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 boopity, boop, 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 thank you. I don't even want to know what this mound of dark, uh, brown is. Better not be what I'm thinking it is. Oh, hey, look, it's a little miniature of Higgs Village. Roar! Roar! I've always wanted to do that. Inside the control room right here is the snow globe that we were missing out on. And we get 2,000 caps. And some mad scientist scrubs, oh hell yeah. Begin the weather test. Aha, I have created rain! Perfect. This is totally something a mad scientist would wear. It's not like swirly goggles, but it, it'll have to work for now. All right. Now we can finally leave Big Mountain and never come back until I have to come back to watch over the place and make sure the scientists don't get out of hand. This is forever going to be my prison. All right, we are now finally and officially back in the Lucky 38, and I am never leaving this place ever again. What's up? Uh, only one more snow globe to go. It feels weird that our adventure is almost coming to an end. At one time, it was just a lonely little recovery from a gunshot wound in Good Springs, and it spanned into all this. I'm going to miss this adventure when it's over. But for now, I'm going to go and take a well-deserved nap. Veronica, what are you doing on my bed? Get out. Out, 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 out. Go get your own room. What's, What's up? Is I want you out of my bed. Come on. No. No, this is my bed. No. No, Veronica. All right. Guess I got the couch then. Next time on Fallout New Vegas, I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, our adventure is coming to a close. And not really much left for me to go on. I guess we just sit and hold out until the final battle is called for. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Later. Give me some size, boy!